you. Thank you very much. So um, while uh, the morning very much focused around the, the general setup, um, we thought we used the afternoon um, where everybody comes back full of energy from lunch break to talk about uh, technical issues. Um, uh, and in this particular case, um, we uh, want to talk with you about the data exchange, which will of course be crucial the quality, the completeness, and the uh, coherence of the data to be submitted so that um, uh, the common sample for audit of operations in Interreg in the future programming period will actually work. For this exercise, we have also invited a few uh, managing authorities to join us. The background is really simple um, because the managing authorities are the ones that basically um, will be the ones to um, to identify this data in their monitoring systems. And for this, uh, um, their input is needed. Um, what you will see in the next few slides, and this is uh, the only thing I can really promise, it's a few slides, um, is something that came out of um, discussions um, from a little working group with Barbara, Joanna, myself, Cemek, and also um, a few other colleagues on the question, what should the data look like? Um, it is a proposal of what we think is right, but um, as already in the first session, it is very much up to you because you are the practitioners, in this case, the MAs and the auditors, to, to, tell, to tell us if this makes sense and uh, if this uh, is helpful. So um, please, don't hesitate at any point to share your input, your comments on what you're going to see. So the objective of this session is basically to reach a common understanding of all the necessary stakeholders for the common sample on the actual fields for the data to be submitted and the content, content that it needs to be, um, that needs to be there. Um, the idea is that at the end of the, the, the discussion, and doesn't mean the discussion has ended today, is to have an actual template, template which can be used um, uh, for automatic extraction from the respective monitoring systems in use. And this is also why we're talking already about it now. The monitoring systems are being set up or continue to use with, um, with the necessary um, amendments um, hey, Katia, <coughs> uh, in the chat, um, there are two people saying that they cannot see your screen, which was uh, the same with me, but I needed to click on Zoom again, ah. and, and therefore I could see the screen again. Okay, so maybe we wait for, sorry, um, I didn't pay attention to the chat, uh, so uh, Beatrice and uh, Victor, could you Victor. click on Zoom again and see if you can see it? and give us a short confirmation. Also small advice from my side because I have sometimes problem with the Zoom application and now I'm using Chrome and it works very well. So for me, internet connection works well for the presentation. Uh, okay, so the browser application. Those who cannot see, you can try to log out and log in again and I will accept you in the, in the meantime if nothing works. Okay, then as the majority seems to be able to see the presentation, I would continue at this point. Okay. Um, so some, some very general principles. The submission is going to happen via SFC. SFC is not ready yet, but also another point, why talking about it now? Because SFC needs to be able to receive this data and to process it. So uh, important that we come as early as possible to conclusion on this, um, on this point. Um, it is one table, one program. That is also important because some of you are audit authorities for several uh, interact programs. And the idea is not to have an um, accumulated um, uh, table with several programs in it. Uh, in principle, it was already discussed this morning in the session, um, the submission should, could happen through the audit authority. However, if there's a different agreement between audit authority and managing authority or the body carrying out the accounting function, 
um, before the data is submitted, there needs to be a, um, a process to reconcile the data between AA and program, so um, that the correctness is uh, to the largest extent possible, in short. Um, all the data um, submitted um, relates to one accounting year, and that you will later see either means relates to corrections carried out in this accounting year, not necessarily the corrected expenditure for that purpose, um, but we're talking about one accounting year always. Um, there's no need um, to uh, have the CCI or the program name in the table itself because that will be uh, um, uh, guaranteed and safeguarded through SFC itself. Because when you log in, you can only you should only have access to um, this particular program, or you should be able to choose the right program you input uh, the data for. Um, first data fields are to ensure a um, clear identification of the units to be sampled. And you remember the unit um, is the aggregated expenditure of a project partner in an accounting year in a project. And for this, um, the data fields to be there would be the project ID, the project acronym or the project name, it depends on how the program set this up, but usually there's a project acronym, the partner number in the project, the partner name in original language, and um, uh, and the partner name in, we, 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 don't, we didn't know how to put it better, but Latin letters. We just need to be aware that due to different alphabets used all across Europe, um, and uh, um, because of this, uh, uh, there needs to be uh, for, depending on where the audit authority is uh, located, a way to identify uh, this partner without a doubt. And then um, a, uh, another column relates to the country of the partner. And for this, we propose the EU abbreviations in use as we, as we know it. So uh, here, for instance, you have Spain, you have Greece, you have Croatia, and you have Hungary. So it's the two digits, which should be um, rather straightforward in understanding. Um, now coming to the actual amounts, and I guess this is where it gets crucial that we create a common understanding. And um, we know that the way we present it here in a PowerPoint presentation might not be the best way. Uh, we will talk about later on a, a little bit about examples to really make sure that we have the same understanding. And um, we will share this example table with you. And we will also share with you a link to a Google spreadsheet so that you have um, the possibility to see everything in one place, which sometimes also helps to, to uh, increase the understanding. So when it comes to the amounts, the following fields are relevant for the data table. All positive amounts declared to the commission in the given, so in the counting year that we're talking about, the amounts withdrawn related to the expenditure declared in the given accounting year, then amounts withdrawn related to expenditure declared in previous accounting years, because that might lead to a difference. And all of this will then lead to the amounts in the sampling population. As the last bullet point, um, uh, um, at the last bullet point, uh, you can see something that is a bit gray, which we propose to leave in the table, but it's more for information purposes. And that is the final expenditure declared to the commission in the giving accounting year, um, which is always a good cross um, checking possibility if amounts were, were uh, right, uh, that everything is right. Um, I'm, I'm going to quickly stop here because I feel that uh, there's still an issue with the presentation, Chemek, or is it going under control? Uh, it's not going under control. There are at least five people who see the black screen. Fascinating. Do you want me to share the screen? Mm. Maybe because you didn't have that problem. Yeah. I mean, we're a bit into the presentation. Apologies to everybody for this, but um, before people go out and come back in again, I think it's better if we, uh, if we, but um, hold on, Chemek. Uh, yes. Let me try 
something else um, because uh, you might not have the latest version of the uh, of the presentation because we were simply doing a few uh, changes this morning. Uh, at least we would ha wouldn't have that uh, issue if we all were in a room. Then either all can see or nobody can see. Uh, even logging in again doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. This is this is why I'm I'm getting also a bit uh, nervous about it. Um, do you see now? I can see. Okay. Yes. Maybe a short feedback from the. From the ones who cannot see in the chat, no. Okay, um, how about this? Uh, we finished the presentation. We anyway have the link to the, um, we have the table and the link to the Google spreadsheet. And um, and because it's just uh, actually uh, one more slide. And then um, we will also PDF this presentation and put it right away in the, um, in the chat so that everybody can uh, at least uh, catch up. And I, uh, we have to investigate this, apologies, because um, this is the first time that we're actually fa facing this. So maybe there was an update in the Zoom software that um, leads to uh, this issue and we're not aware of it. Okay, um, so I, I was just saying about this gray point about the, the final expenditure declared to the EC in a given accounting year, which is more for information purposes and cross-checking. Um, to, uh, um, to, to explain a bit um, more in detail the, um, what is behind the different fields that I just mentioned. All positive amounts declared to the EC in the given accounting year means this is the accumulated expenditure of a project partner, which is the sampling unit included in payment applications to the commission in the given accounting year. The amounts withdrawn related to expenditure declared in the given accounting year, which is the next column, is um, act this is expenditure which was declared to the EC in the given accounting year, but has been um, was included already in an interim uh, payment application, but then has been corrected, deducted in the same accounting year. And uh, what is very important here is that we're not talking about expenditure, which was um, um, corrected uh, through management verifications or at MA level um, before the declaration of those this expenditure um, in the accounting year. We will. Uh, try to make this a bit clearer, just to be sure that we all have the same understanding in the examples later on. Um, the, the third column, amounts withdrawn related to expenditure declared in previous accounting years, uh, means this is when uh, what happens in projects that you actually have to correct expenditure, which had been included in payment application in the uh, uh, in the previous or in any of the previous accounting years and um, is important here because this expenditure will not go into uh, the sampling population because this relates to accounting years which are which are closed and um, um, again this uh, um, amount in the sampling population is the logical consequences of what was declared and what was corrected with regard to the current accounting year. And then um, here's the gray box, the final expenditure declared to the EC uh, in the given accounting year, which is uh, purely for information uh, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, for information purposes. Uh, a quick example. And we start with, if you start with example one, here, the organization has um, reported a total of 1,000 euros and there are no uh, corrections with regard to this. So um, the 1,000 euros go into the uh, sampling population. In example two, you can see that uh, the project partner has uh, reported, three, positively reported 300 euros, but 
has to do a, carry out a correction with regard to previous accounting years for a total of 800 euros. In this case, you see um, in, in the example the difference between the amount that goes into the sampling population and the final amount declared to the EC in the given um, accounting year. The positive amount of 300 euros will go into the sampling population, while the overall amount reported for this um, project partner is negative. Um, Example three is a case where you have to carry out, where the project has to carry out um, uh, corrections related to, uh, it's usually when you have closed projects and um, uh, something comes up in a, in a national uh, check or for whatever reason, um, their last payment request was included in a previous accounting year. Um, but for the current accounting year, uh, it has they, they have to do only a negative uh, correction, uh, which will um, leave uh, zero for the positive amounts. Um, the amounts withdrawn correspond to the correction they have carried out. None of their expenditure will go into the population for the sample. Um, and the final expenditure declared to the EC, as you can see um, in the last column, will be negative. Um, examples uh, four and five um, go a bit in the same direction, but um, have a mix of uh, corrections, either relating to the current accounting year, but declared expenditure, or to previous accounting years. So uh, starting point here is that um, a total of 200 euros for example four uh, positive amounts. However, of those 200 euros, 100 euros have to be corrected in the current accounting year. And on top of that, there are also 300 euros uh, which need to be corrected for previous accounting year. The amount that will go into the sampling population would be 100. And um, uh, example five is basically the same. It's just that we didn't take round figures. We took 140 euros and then 15 and five. But um, you can see uh, the differences uh, when it all is all added up in the um, population. Um, and with this, I think that's it. Yes. Um, I would stop sharing because I, I, I still feel that unfortunately there are too many people who can still not see the presentation. And um, Barbara, if you maybe want to um, add and complete on this, uh, just let me know if you need the presentation. No, I don't need the presentation. I will already uh, add some clarification or repeat the things to for better understanding. And I hope in the meantime, either Katia and Przemek will find some technical solution or individual participants. In my case, Chrome works very well. So uh, uh, hopefully in a few minutes, everyone will be able to see detailed examples that Katia has prepared. Mm. Uh, I would like to stress that the table uh, is used by us for two different purposes. The first main purpose is selection of the sample. So we need simply the positive population. However, the second important purpose is to reconcile with expenditure declared to the commission. We are in a very um, bad situation during sample selection because we received your data in the 1st of August and we need to have the uh, sample selection by the end of August, informing you on the 1st of September. It gives us very little time to clarify things in case there are any problems with reconciliation of expenditure, because either audit authority will not be there or managing authorities will not be there to clarify to us any doubts. Uh, thus, we hope that with this data, we will be able immediately to conclude based on show, uh, very simple uh, verification in SFC, whether the uh, population submitted are to us is complete and correct or not. Um, the, uh, the, the sample will be selected like in the current programming period based on the positive population, which is a new, th which is not a new thing. Uh, audit authorities are doing all the time. However, we know that in practice there could be uh, the positive population could be established in different ways. 
so the way it is presented now by Katya and uh, which follows from the template is the way that we would recommend that these are that these data are submitted to us. And for some audit authorities, it will be obvious if they are using the same system. For some audit authorities, maybe uh, the, the examples will clarify any doubts. Um, what is for us important is uh, that uh, uh, we have in the IT system correct recording of financial corrections. The recording of financial corrections uh, needs to be done based on the audit trail and uh, uh, general um, re uh, requirements of the CPR legislation. However, we know that in practice, even if IT systems are correctly designed to produce this kind of data, not all the time audit authorities can get in practice very good quality uh, information from the IT systems because of different reasons. Either there is problem with the reporting from the IT systems or the data are there, but the managing authorities sometimes instead of recording separately positive amounts and separately negative amounts from previous years, they apply nothing. For example, in case beneficiary declares in a payment claim 100 euro and at the same time informs the managing authority that he needs to make corrections from previous years of 40 euro the correct way of recording in the it system is to put 100 euro as the positive new amount and separately 40 euro as a negative amount from previous years so that in the sampling population we have the full amount of 100 for the given accounting year and this 40 euro goes to the negative population. In practice, the only data that we need to reconcile expenditure and to select our sample uh, are positive expenditure declared within the year and financial corrections by divided uh, between corrections related to the current accounting year and the previous accounting years. The positive population from which we will select the sample will be all the positive amounts per partner declared within the counting year after deducting anything which has been corrected by the final payment claim. In case beneficiary, for example, at the beginning of the year declared two machines, one for eight, uh, uh, for 80 euro and another for 20 euro, and by the end of the year, the machinery for 20 euro was decertified, it doesn't make sense to audit it. So for our sampling population, we'll take into consideration only 80, that is the difference between 100 and 20. Um, I know that many audit authorities are already using this system. Some audit authorities are not using uh, it. They are, for example, taking only positive amounts. Uh, but, uh, so it is something uh, which maybe at the beginning can um, trigger some doubts. Uh, I hope that uh, after this session, after uh, Katya's examples, everything will be clear. Uh, Katya, I'm not sure whether you are already ready or you still fight with some technical issues. No, I'm just, um, uh, I'm a bit um, unsure um, how to go about the, um, the sharing of my screen, but I think I will do after. But uh, there are already two questions, Barbara, so maybe we take okay. the questions for the moment. And um, maybe uh, to start with Matt and then uh, Jacek, um, your, your, your question in the, from the chat comes next. And the important thing, you can find Katya's uh, presentation, well, the Commission's presentation in the chat, and you can download it in PDF. And there is also a link to the table, the uh, Google spreadsheet. So, Matt, please, yes. Uh, thank you, thank you, Katya. Thank you for the presentation. It was mostly very clear and understandable. Mm, there is a one... Uh, there's a one specific uh, question that has already also been addressed in the chat and that's I'm not quite sure I understand your way of differentiating between the um, expenditure in the sampling population and final amount declared. It's, it's a, it seems to be a complicated topic because the thing is if uh, for example, if um, any deductions are applied before the amounts are certified to the Commission, then 
uh, these deductions are already there uh, in the sampling population. So they, uh, so they won't need to be declared separately. So in this case, the, the columns, the sampling population and final net amount are exactly the same. On the other hand, if there are uh, deductions that are applied after the population is uh, declared to the commission, then these, these deductions would not actually be available by that time. So I'm, I'm, I'm slightly confused because uh, uh, these deductions are not there when we give the population, when we forward this population to you. And if they are there, uh, these two columns would be equal. So um, apparently I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very confused about this. Okay, I hope I, <laughs> I hope I will manage to clarify everything. So we have two types of financial corrections. Corrections which are done by the managing authority before declaration to the commission. So the, the beneficiary declares 100 or the uh, managing authority says, I'm sorry that 50 is uh, ineligible, I will only declare 50. So in such a case, only 50 is declared to the commission and this 50 we don't care for our sampling population. It will never be reflected in the table that was in the presentation. Now the situation is different if, for example, the beneficiary declared 100 and the managing authority was happy with this 100, declared it to the commission, but then a few months later, the managing authority went on the spot and saw that actually there, uh, there is a problem, the, there is a fraud or whatever reason, and then 50 needs to be removed. So in case at the moment of the final payment claim, it's already recorded in the system, this deduction of, let's imagine it will be 50, then in the IT system, there will be two amounts, 100 declared at the beginning of the year and 50 declared later. And since we already do something knowing this, uh, knowing about this situation, we don't want to sample from 100 because we want to know the error rate based on 50. And then in this uh, specific example, there will be the same amount in the expenditure declared to the commission and expenditure and the final amount. So there will be exactly, there is no problem about that. Now, why we want to have these two columns? Because this table will be used for us for two purposes. One for sample selection and for sample selection in the table, we will only take positive amounts, which are in the column positive population. Uh, only that will be subject to, to, uh, to, to our selection. Now, we only also have this final amount, and the reason is for information to make sure that when the audit authority or the managing authority includes in this table all the uh, payment claims, all the partners, uh, positive, negative amounts for the whole year, including negative corrections for previous years, that this final amount should be equal to the amount declared to the commission in the final payment claim. So this is only for reconciliation purpose so that we are sure that what is declared to the commission is equal to what is in your uh, table. But in reality, we will not use it for anything unless at some later stage it will turn out that there is the problem with the quality of the data. So we have already some information on which basis we can discuss with you. Otherwise, in the SFC system, the system will compare is the final amount at the end equal to expenditure declared to commission? And it says yes, so we are happy with that. If there will be some problem, then possibly we will need to investigate to find out whether we can use your data or there is some issue to reject the data. Actually, now we are discussing and we also would like to, ha to have your experience and all your um, position on this issue because we are thinking about two systems. In case this system, in case the data don't match, we don't accept it in SFC at all. And uh, so the amounts must be equal. What is the final amount and what is declared to the commission? But at the same time, we think that maybe it is very strict. Maybe there are some specific situations that these amounts do not match. 
but even if there is some very specific situation why these amounts do not match, there could be different reasons. There could be, for example, extrapolated corrections from the previous year, or there could be some administrative adjustment. That there were some mistakes in the past about declaration to the commission, so there is adjustment amount. But still, if there would be a need to put some adjusting amount, we would like that it is put directly in the table so that we have clear information about all the amounts which are which are part of the expenditure declared to the Commission. Uh, okay, thank you, Barbara. Uh, that, that clarified a bit. Uh, from, uh, that clarified a bit for me, but I'm just uh, I would just like to add from from my part that. Uh, the, the situation you describe is fairly specific and in our practice, the practice that I have seen, it happens like very rarely. So mostly, mostly these two, most of the time, like uh, more than 90% of the time, these, these two columns would be equal. So, but, but thank you, thank you. But we are happy that they are equal. It is simply to avoid the situation that, for example, audit authority prepares perfect table, but there is some either IT bug or there is some misunderstanding by the person inputting the data and the data are not complete. Yes, okay. Um, I, Barbara, there were two more questions from uh, from from Jacek, I take them in one, and then uh, Jose, we go to you. And after um, uh, Johanna, um, one is exactly the question: Why um, should we have uh, withdrawals in the table? Doesn't that increase the risk of errors? Um, uh, well, I, I think you try to explain <clears throat> the thinking behind, and I think also it's important <laughs> that. Hopefully, the um, the extraction will be automatic, and therefore uh, there will be no errors um, on this. Uh, I I don't know if you have to complete. And then there was a follow up, which is um, also from 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 Jacek, the question whether this doesn't bear the risk of um, basically doubling the work if the reconciliation is taking place at audit authority level. Um, why submitting all this uh, data um, uh, to the Commission? Um, Maybe I can reply no. to this. Uh, yes, question. please, Salvatore. Uh, Katia, uh, uh, first um, of all, uh, we have to clarify that it will be the Commission that will um, do the sampling. So we have to be really sure that the population that we take before selecting the sample is the total population. And the only possibility to have this uh, uh, assurance is to have this reconciliation between the positive amount and the negative amounts. And we will compare these two values with the expenditure which has been certified in the final payment claim of DOP. So if we don't have, if we miss one of the elements, we will not have this assurance that the, the population is, is complete. So this is why we request to have this um, uh, list of uh, irregularities coming from previous accounting years or from uh, expenditure claim uh, which have been submitted earlier in the accounting period. Um, concerning the second question from the Mrs. Livine uh, Lavoine, um, these, let's say, ex post uh, corrections, of course, this will not uh, intervene in the, in the sampling. These are corrections which are applied after the final payment claim and which are done directly in the accounts. So this uh, is, let's say, um, as it is the case for this programming period, that after the um, certifying authority has submitted the final payment claim for the accounting period, there could be further corrections resulting either from the audit of operations or from 
um, corrections made by the managing authority itself after first level controls or by declaration from the beneficiary of uh, mistakes. And these uh, corrections, they are not to be reported in this uh, Excel file because this intervene in the uh, submission of the accounts, these corrections. And I also wanted to add, because there are many questions, or well, there are at least two questions concerning uh, reliance on the data provided by the authorities. We will fully rely on the work done by the authorities, because as you can imagine, if in August the Commission will receive 100 sampling populations, it's not possible technically that we make reconciliation ourselves. So uh, we will rely on your work. Um, and we will not be doing in practice anything apart from this SFC simple checking whether the total amount submitted is equal to what was declared to the Commission. And this is important that this information is there because otherwise in case there would be any back problem in the IT system or there would be perfect reconciliation done by the audit authority, but the person submitting the data would somehow misinterpret something, it didn't submit the, the totality of the data, we would have problem with the quality of the results. We know from experience that in the past we had many sampling procedures which were heavily criticized and questions, uh, questioned by the court which had problems to reconcile the expenditure declared to the Commission. So we want to prevent this issue by having this data inputted in SFC. And in case there would be any kind of potential issues because of some adjusting amounts or any specific situation, we also have already the base based on which we can discuss with you. But we are not going to investigate into this data because it's simply technically not possible. We rely on your work. Yes, I think. Um, so maybe uh, Gizi and then um, Johanna. Okay. I hope, uh, hopefully you hear me. So uh, I have, um, I understand uh, why there should be a reconciliation and why you need to divide the withdrawals for the given accounting year and for the previous accounting years because these withdrawals are in the end uh, in the appendix two. Uh, in the tables, so it's, it's very useful to have these, uh, this information in advance because they will go in the appendix too. But uh, from my point of view, I and for the, we should, I think it should be done uh, more sim simpler here because I think that the amount of the sampling population should be equal to the all positive amount declared to the EC. And the reason is because uh, if you look in the slide 22 and example four, uh, because I think there could be uh, some, someone can do, uh, for example, error, because uh, there should be an adjustment of the all positive amounts uh, declared to the commission with the amounts withdrawn in the given uh, accounting year. So the managing authority uh, an accounting body declared to the Commission 200 and 100 uh, is uh, withdrawn in the given accounting year and the uh, amount of the subject population is 100. So that it's clear there should be uh, adjustments. Uh, but uh, there could be also error because, uh, for example, uh, the, 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 you, you cannot check uh, the, the, whether the audit authority or someone uh, has uh, um, correctly associated the amounts uh, for the given accounting years to the, or not to the previous accounting year. So, uh, for from my point of view, it, it should be uh, the, the the sampling population uh, only the all positive amounts uh, required to the uh, EC in the given accounting year and no adjustment because it will be much uh, simpler for you to select the sample. You will do it much quickly. And uh, you will also have this reconciliation, but you will not do the error with the adjustment. So, so this is uh, maybe things for a consideration for you. Um, I don't know, it's just my remark. Thank you. Uh, Irji, just to address your concern, you know, we, we have sometimes the situation that there is positive expenditure declared to the commission at the beginning of the year. Then a few months later, managing authority goes on the spot and then it turns out that it is a fraud. So the whole expenditure is decertified. 
And in such a situation, if we would stick only to the positive uh, population, which was declared to the Commission, we would have some amounts which is not there. So then it doesn't make sense, you know, to audit this kind of expenditure. Yes, but I can also say that, uh, for example, this is a, only a suspicion for a fraud and the fraud is not confirmed and usually it's, uh, uh, let's say, withdrawn according to Article 137.2 and uh, two or three years later the police say or the investigation say there is no fraud and this amount is recertified and uh, I think it, it could intervene with your initial population and then uh, it could also intervene with the population which you will, you will have uh, next year or year afterwards because uh, suddenly there, there will appear a uh, uh, recertification of the withdrawal. So uh, maybe for the simplification, I would stick uh, to this uh, all positive amount declared to the EC, but it's, it's uh, for maybe colleagues have, uh, that we can discuss it, uh, yes. Um, I just uh, try to show you what can happen. Huh? Thank you. Uh, maybe some general remark, be, uh, uh, what is very important that the IT systems are able to produce this kind of data. First of all, they are able to produce this kind of data to have them register them and also to give easy reporting because I know that some audit authorities are struggling to get the correct data from the IT system. They need to simply use some manual techniques to get it, which makes the things very complicated. But due to the audit requirements, anyway, this information should be registered in the IT system. And we would uh, advise that as audit authority, you try to be in contact with managing authority as soon as possible to make sure that these data are covered by the IT system correctly with the correct uh, qualification to which accounting here it refers to, because this is a requirement of the accounts to have this data presented. Uh, that there is a reporting so that you can very easily get this kind of data. An additional thing, which I think is very important for the managing authority to ensure and for audit authority to check is that the managing authority correctly record this data. As I mentioned at the beginning, that sometimes when the managing authority receive payment application from the beneficiary with new amounts, but the beneficiary at the same time informs, I have corrections from three years ago, the managing authority puts in the IT system only the net amount, which is a problem because if the corrections from the previous year is higher, that what is new declared in the current year, finally it will not be reflected in the sample population at all. So I have the feeling that in case from the start we all make effort to ensure Interact makes effort that the IT system is perfect <laughs> for these people who are using the Interact IT system <laughs> and every member state make an effort that the systems are properly designed and the managing authority is aware of the special need not to do nothing to register the amounts. I hope that it, all these amounts will be automatically and very easily available to everyone without major problems with reconciliation for anyone, for audit authorities and for us finally with the quality of the received data. Yeah, thanks Barbara. Johanna? Um, Barbara nicely said exactly what is what I wanted to raise. This is going to be quite a constraint on the IT systems to get that properly done. Um, it will also, and I understand very much the requirements from the Commission to be able um, to, to have this, this reconciliation done. I get that absolutely. Um, however, I am for, for corrections from the side of the managing authority, corrections that are implemented from the managing authority themselves, I don't see the biggest problems in, in saying this is old accounting year, this is new accounting year, this is all fine, because we understand the notion of accounting year and when things were reported. Where I see bigger problems is exactly what Barbara mentioned, the corrections that are coming from the project partners, where they have zero notion of when we um, declare something to the commission. So there would have to be some kind of follow-up to be done. And that's where I think it is very, very important that we talk about this now, because that will have to be properly developed. And I'm happy to see Alexandra here um, who will who will deal with that for GEMS, which is the system that we're going to use, um, because that it'll be it'll be crucial that we also, if project partners are adding corrective expenditures, that they 
understand, and I'm worried about that in general, that they cannot just say, hey, we're correcting from a report ago, because they will not know if this report in the meantime has been certified to the commission or not. So there will be, um, for every expenditure item that we are reporting, um, there will have to be this understanding that we are able also from ourselves uh, ourselves to, to clearly see which, where is it at, which accounting year was it reported in, and that'll be very, very important to be set up. And basically from MAJS side, we'll have to double check or ensure that also when beneficiaries are reporting those corrections, that that is all properly reported then or registered in the system. And I see that as quite a challenge, I have to say. As much as I, um, I think it's easy, the reconciliation, I'm personally not worried about because we've always managed to do that and made ensured that there was the it was clear that what was declared by the program was also what we had in the table so but the the negative amounts i think really will require a lot of diligence from from partner and program side and um, a lot of constraints there on the it side yes. I wanted to add that a few years ago when I was working as an auditor, I had good luck that I saw the perfect IT system that each time there is that is there was a workflow from the from the level of the beneficiary until the level of the commission. So each time that there was any correction of the beneficiary, it was easily linked to the original claim of the beneficiary one year ago or within the same year. And also immediately the system knew the date when this deduction was declared to the commission. So this is why we are warning at this early stage, because it depends how the system will be designed. I have the feeling that even if there is a legal requirement in the accounts to present this uh, amount deduction withdrawals per year, and obviously it refers not to when the beneficiary declares, but when these amounts are finally declared to the commission, I have the feeling that sometimes about financial corrections, there are some problems uh, with the IT system, the way they are recorded. The good thing about ETC programs is that because of the small uh, size, somehow manually, I suppose you can sometimes make up, compensate for the problems with the IT system. But obviously, ideally is that at the early stage, everyone is trying to look into this issue to ensure that we don't have problems at later stages. And there was some discussion on the jams. Uh, in the meantime, Mauro was asking uh, if jams already covers these requirements. Uh, um, for those who are participating uh, now, there is Alexandra Kulmer with us, who is from the GEMS uh, team who is preparing the, the, the GEMS system. Uh, Alexandra has been notified about the, the problem and the complexity and she knows and she, well, she, she will take it into account. Hello from my side also, thank you. Uh, just a very short, yeah, basically we are not at the stage of um, even having the model for reporting costs in GEMS. So we, we are at the stage where we have only uh, calls and the application model ready. So that's why it's perfect in time to discuss this now. Also for us to all take all this into consideration. So basically this is why I'm here today so that we can exactly follow um, the logic that is required for reporting then uh, the costs in um, the... the um, population in the in the SFC. Um, yeah, and as, as also said by Mauro, in the previous system designed by Interact and EMS, it was also that um, our idea was not that beneficiaries would directly insert the corrections, but rather would inform the MA who would then know which item is the one concerned by the correction and directly link the correction to the item uh, where these costs were reported. And that way it was ensured that uh, correct accounting year and so on uh, is always there. So, but how to technically implement this in the future, it's still under preparation. So Barbara, the system you audited must have been EMS of Interact. Okay. <laughs> 
No, but I think it's it's really important to to have this um, this conversation now, and to, to also see the concerns and to ensure that the systems can take this into consideration. And it is true that it will go to the level of items reported, which then need to be linked to specific interim payment applications made to the Commission. And that's a long way huh? from a project partner to the lead partner, to the project claim, to any clarifications that happen, to the accounting function, uh, to the Commission. So. Um, uh, this is the time now. Um, there's another question, uh, Barbara. I don't think we have we have extensively discussed this um, in the chat, and that comes how the information will actually be inputted in SFC if it's going to be an upload uh, via an Excel file or any other format, or whether it's going to be a copy paste. I hope not copy paste because this is where we make errors. Uh, we had a meeting on this issue with our IT people, um, and actually, I'm not an expert on that. I hope if Vladi is here, maybe she will compliment me, <laughs> So because it's difficult for me to clarify. I didn't understand a lot during this meeting with IT people, but what they reassured me, it will be structured data. So the member states need to ensure that they have all this data in the IT system. And then they will need a very small software to incorporate this data in SFC. And obviously, they ensured me that after this transfer of the data in SFC, there will be still possibility of manual adjustments. Because I was afraid that there could be different situations that this automatic transfer of data will result in some problems which will need to be settled somehow manually. And they reassured me that it will be possible manually. Uh, thus, we will uh, we will discuss uh, now in more detail with our IT people, and also uh, I will uh, double check with the colleagues uh, who participated in discussions with IT people, and probably uh, in writing in June we will provide you more detailed information in this regard. Yes, I think the message is it should all be automated. Yes, Iska, please follow up. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we will wait for the reply of, uh, of the IT colleagues uh, uh, as regards the uploading of the of the data. My, I have also another question. All these issues, all the table, the requirements, uh, where exactly it will be written? Because uh, see, uh, if we have, to, we will require for, from our managing authority to make some changes within the system. It will require probably a public procurement. They will have to to step on some, um, how to say, written requirement by the, by the commission, like the regulation or some something, uh, because it will require also financing on these changes. And uh, first of all, and second of all, this small software we were talking about, which we, sh we should use to transfer the data from one system to another also has to be financed. And both. So my question is, uh, uh, where and how are you planning to to, to put this requirement uh, in order to all the authorities, uh, as you know, we are public authorities, uh, will be able to to start with the the public procurement and the requirements for this uh, specific technical issues. Yes, we understand these concerns, and our idea is that next week we also have this point on the technical meeting, and we'll do a follow up of these two events by preparation and kind of paper. So this paper would include all the main information that we already transmitted via presentation, but so that you have black and white information how we are going to do it. And also the Excel file will be attached so that you can already begin to work on the basis of the formal information that comes from the commission. Okay, okay, thank you. It will be very useful. Thank you. <clears throat> there any more questions, concerns at the moment? I don't see any. Um, the plan was originally to, to, to briefly go through the examples we have provided in a more extensive way 
and uh, maybe we can do this briefly by just focusing on a few. I'm afraid I have to share my screen again, and um, this might lead to for for some of you to to not being able to see it. But it's going to be the Excel file that we put as a as a um, as a PDF also in the chat for download. So for 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 those of you who are not able to see my shared screen for whatever reasons, um, I would kindly ask you to, to simply open the table. I will try to be explicit so that you can, that you can follow. Um, the purpose would really just be to, to, to um, make sure that we all have the same understanding of what goes where. And I think um, after that, maybe we take a last round of concerns and comments and questions on this. And then maybe we do some regrouping. The file was so, published at 1.53 and it's Interact AI meeting examples for data exchange because there was uh, much communication in the chat. So if you go back to 1.53 p.m., there is the file. Thank you, Cemek. And I would like to reassure you that what Katya will present now is not something which we require you to submit to us. We only require, you, we only ask to submit the aggregated amount by project partner, but Katya prepared example by individual payment claim only to illustrate how you aggregate the data so that it was clear what is for us positive population, what is for us negative population. But the data by individual payment claim of beneficiaries will not be submitted to the commission. Uh, yes, very, very important disclaimer. This is really for example purposes only, not for uh, for what you have to do. It's just really to create a common understanding what we said um, at the introductory stage uh, for this. So, um, uh, because in the table itself, you will see that it's even more extensive, the information we provide, because we split the total amount of the beneficiary into different payment claims, meaning different reports submitted by the project partner, which then have gone into different interim payments to uh, interim payment applications to the commission and then have potentially undergone um, some uh, corrections. So maybe really just to focus on the um, examples with the, um, with, with the corrections. Um, uh, so uh, for instance, uh, we take um, example three, which is uh, the one with um, uh, <clears throat> where there's no new expenditure of this partner in the current um, uh, accounting year. But um, uh, so there's only what uh, some of the programs would uh, call a corrective claim. So a claim only coming with a negative amount uh, of uh, 300 euros. So, uh, and this is related to an interim payment application, which relates back to the, f it's, a f um, it's a made up accounting year, 21-22. Um, and uh, so what you can see is that there's no expenditure going into the sampling population of this partner. Um, however, they, this goes into the net amount reported uh, to the commission. Um, for the example four, we have the situation that the project partner has submitted two reports, two payment claims to the program one with 100 euros and one with uh, 50 euros. And um, for this we have, and it's really uh, quite challenging if you, if you work on such examples to, to kind of put the right, find the right place where to put the correction. Because in our example, we said that uh, this uh, project partner would have to correct um, the 100 euros, which were originally included in the interim payment application one of the current accounting year to the uh, commission and then was had to be corrected with the uh, following payment claim. So um, we chose to allocate this in this table just to make clear that this that those two are related. Um, and put like the current accounting year concerns interim payment application one, but the actual correction was then carried out with interim payment application two, just to make it even more complicated. Um, so um, as, a, as a total amount that would go into the sampling 
population would remain 50 euros, which are included um, uh, from this uh, uh, project partner, which is also equal to the amount, um, the net amount uh, reported for this um, project partner. And then maybe we go to um, uh, here, the um, final example, example uh, five, um, where we have a, um, where we made up a mix of issues, basically. And um, the first is this partner comes with three individual payment claims, 170, 130, 140 euros. The total amount in principle of positive expenditure is 140 euros. However, um, 15 euros out of this or a total of 20 euros have to be corrected for this project partner um, in retrospect and uh, 15 euros relate to um, corrections carried out put into practice with interim payment application 3 but the 15 euros related to expenditure which were declared in interim payment application 1 um, and another additional five euros which are related to an interim payment application from the previous accounting year. So um, in this example, you see that a, to um, a total of 125 euros would go into the uh, sampling population. Um, I think this is as extensive as we can get, but I have the feeling there's anywhere already quite a good understanding on on what is needed. The question is just, uh, do we come to an agreement that this is needed uh, in this way, or if there are better ways or other ways uh, to do this? So I... Sorry. Stop. Oh, shall, I, shall I leave it for the moment, Barbara, and you add? Yeah, okay, in this last example, you said that the total amount, because I, I don't see it. Uh, uh, if you move maybe the, um, the sheet to the left, because I, I cannot see. What is the total amount that goes into the population? 125 euros. And why is that? Because 15 yeah. out of the 140 40 yeah. euros related to this accounting year, yeah. um, if, out of this 15 had to be corrected. Yes. And, and the five from previous accounting year. Exactly, and five from the previous accounting year. So it's 120. But the previous accounting year is closed, so it's no longer with the, with the relevant expenditure for this accounting year. So, so Salvadore, this, so the final amount will be 120 for reconciliation, but for our sampling population would be 125 because we ignore this negative amount of five because it concerns uh, previous uh, years. So in fact, this five will go to the negative population and our positive population will be 125. And to reassure everyone, we will submit at the, some later stage two tables, a table that we expect audit authority to send to us and this table with the examples because a lot of information, as I already mentioned, is just to illustrate how the data are aggregated in principle. So we will not ask for individual rows per claim of the beneficiary. We will not ask in which payment claim it was and in which year. Uh, uh, so there will be like two tables, one the real one for submission of the data and the other one examples to illustrate how we aggregate the data so that it's easier for the people developing the system to understand. No, no, I, I, I understand now, I, I was confused. So 125 is the amount that goes into the positive population, which is the net of the exactly of the expenditure certified during the accounting period. Exactly. And five goes into the negative population. Yes. So yes. Overall, overall, the beneficiary, the payments made to this uh, partner or the expenditure declared by this partner is 120. Exactly. Okay, no, no, it's fine. Okay. So, uh, Barbara, I would stop sharing unless you have any other comments. No, no. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I wish I could look into either critical, convinced, or skeptical faces. J just in general, anybody thinks that this um, this is already too complex? Maybe Katia, it's uh, Rafael. Yes, please. Uh, my maybe to stimulate a little bit the debate. Huh? Uh, in fact, for me, there is not uh, something very new, no, for the authorities this uh, set of data yeah, because it's say exactly the same right? i think it's something that they are they are collecting right now and the only difference is how we will uh, in which format or how we will uh, uh, receive this information and this is why now we are uh, developing this module in sfc that for sure we will make all the best to to do it in a in an easy uh, friendly way for the for the authorities but in terms of substance, the, the data is already collected by the by the authorities for their own purpose uh, in 1420. If I'm not mistaken, eh, because I'm not working in one uh, authority, not yet. But um, but uh, but this is my impression. Eh? No, but this is exactly what what we are doing uh, manually. Uh, uh, when we receive the sampling data from the audit authorities is to reconcile the, the positive amount and the negative amount and see that it matches with the uh, expenditure declared. So in this respect, as Rafael is saying, there is nothing, no, no new requirements. And if this data can be um, extracted directly from the IT, IT system that is, is being developed, it will be even easier, in my view, for the new programming period. Yes, because I wanted to uh, reconfirm that anyway, this data needs to be governed by the managing authority due to audit requirements. So there is actually no other way, uh, but they, this data needs to be there. The only problem is that sometimes they are in the system, but put in such a way that to reconcile with expenditure declared to the commission and present this positive population for audit authority, it's a struggle how to get this data, how to group between payment claims. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of heavy work. So for us, it's very important that we are speaking now at this stage to make sure that also reporting from the IT system allows to easily extract this data in the form that you need. Thanks. And also, I, I just read the last, last, last point in the chat and I'm, I'm very happy about it because that was the, what I was hoping for. Uh, that is actually just straightforward, but uh, um, um, easy, please. Yes, uh, I have to frankly say that I am quite skeptical, but not uh, because it is uh, in the regulation and it is also in the guidance and how the, the sample should be selected and what should be taken into account. But on the other hand, if you want to mm, if you want to have uh, this solution um, and uh, realize have uh, some IT system which will take into account the withdrawals from the previous year or the withdrawals from the current accounting year uh, and match uh, these uh, data together in order to make adjustment of the payment claims uh, for the current accounting year, etc. So it's um, it's not uh, it's very complex task for the IT. So my, my, my suggestion was that uh, just keep it simple and select the, the, the sample only from the positive values and uh, the, all the negative amounts uh, take uh, for the uh, audit of accounts and uh, for the uh, appendix 2 and appendix 8 of the accounts where you should also do the reconciliation and verify by, by the amounts. Uh, this is my explanation why I'm quite skeptical because I think that uh, so much information and so much operations to put together for, for uh, ID system 
and also at the at the level of the final recipients in the small uh, fund projects, uh, it will be quite difficult. Uh, this is just my concern. Huh? So I try to uh, suggest a solution which will be simpler. So that's that's all. Thank you. But, but um, maybe can I just ask a question, Barbara, before you comment? Because um, I'm not sure I fully understand what you're proposing. Because what I understand is that we really need, because we need an amount of um, actual eligible expenditure of the project partner declared to the commission. And that is crucial to have that. So that, and, and I'm not talking about netting the, like the gray column, but really the um, column which says at the, um, which is now called um, amount and sampling population. And that needs to be there. We need to be sure that it's 100% correct because that is, as I understand it, the amount which will also then help to calculate the error correction and the extrapolated error correction. So we, we need to be, we need to anyway find a way that we have absolute correct amounts at least there because there cannot be amendments later on and and if, she, yeah. and if she if i understand where your proposal would be to put in the negative population all the corrections concerning previous years and also all the corrections concerning the current year but you know but in reality for the accounts anyway the it system needs to register everything and i know that from katia's example it seems quite complicated because by payment claim you know that you know we look payment claim by payment claim but in reality the it system will get immediately the global amounts because he will see per, but he needs to have it registered by each project partner and in which year it concerns because finally the it system will immediately say for this project partner, we get all positive amount in this amount. And by the end of the accounting year, by the end before the five until the final payment claim, the final correction done for this project is this amount. So this is the only thing which we need finally from the IT system. And anyway, the IT system will have these amounts for the purpose of the accounts. Yes, that's true, but you also need for the sample selection. Um... You have, uh, you have to define for the IT the sampling items and uh, yes. under the condition which you have, you uh, you have to say the PC program or software that you have to match together the positive amount and the negative amount in order to create, a, let's say, new item which will be sampling unit and uh, you will uh, then hit the sampling units with the MUS or uh, RS a method, um, but you 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 need something more than only a reconciliation. You need uh, to merge the things together in order to create a sampling unit, and this could be the the step which is uh, quite difficult. I I, I guess, but uh, this is uh, just my opinion. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the, it's no problem for the IT company. To, to create the sampling unit, taking into account positive and negative and uh, make the adjustments uh, of the positive amount and uh, put it straight forward into the sampling population and select the sample from, 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 from it. Uh, well, just, just, this is just my concern. Yuji, I know some system uh, where the member state have a great IT system which produces everything, but not re uh, not re correct reporting for the purpose of the selection of the sample. So what happens is the system knows everything, but then the auditors needs to group together in Excel all the positive payment claim with the negative payment claim correcting this payment claim. So obviously it is not a nice exercise because you need to do it in Excel manually. That's why we discuss now to make sure that when you design IT system, you ask for IT people to make this reporting directly available to avoid that in Excel, that the authority gets all the positive payment claims, puts them together, and then all negative payment claims related to these payment claims and uh, group them to get a net amount. <clears throat> and maybe if I may just add on this, because there's also a comment from 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 Jacek in the in in the um, in the chat, and I think it's important to clarify, um, we, we're we're talking about the best case scenario that uh, these things are automatically extracted from the uh, from the IT system, uh, because all automatic extraction reduce the error uh, reduce the risk of errors in 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 this area. 
Uh, however, of course, maybe this might not be possible or there might be some other obstacle, but um, if it is possible and it can be implemented, um, it would be the best case sort of scenario. And I would also like to emphasize uh, it, it. nobody is bound to use GEMS. This is an offer. This is um, uh, it's on voluntary basis. There are many programs out there that run their own monitoring system with uh, um, uh, they're very happy about it. The only thing is that what Interact can say is that we, for those who want to use GEMS, will have the possibility to involve this. Um, I guess, Salvatore, you also wanted to com com um, comment yes. on this, and then Johanna so Florence. I, I wanted to, to, to give uh, an example to illustrate, um, in particular to Jill, but for the audience, uh, why it is important to distinguish the corrections of the current accounting year and of the previous accounting year. Imagine you have a project partner that has done a payment claim of 1,000 euros. And before the end of the programming period, uh, the managing authority does a control and it detects that there is a complete irregularity on this, uh, on this operation. And this amount is completely decertified. In, if, if I follow your approach, you would have 1,000 in, uh, in the positive population and you would have a, a correction of 1,000, which reconciles with the uh, total amount uh, declared for this partner, which is zero. But imagine that this positive uh, item is selected, you would go at the level of the beneficiary and audit an expenditure that is no longer in the payment claim, that is no longer reported to, to the EC. In fact, the, the, the payment claims that are, or the expenditure that are withdrawn before the end of the um, accounting year are to be considered to a certain sense like the expenditure that are uh, deducted before, um, before uh, claiming from the from the commission. It means that this expenditure that is deducted uh, before the, the final payment claim no longer exists. So you don't need to audit uh, anymore this uh, uh, this um, expenditure item. You see. Thank you very much, Salvatore. I think it's a it's a good analogy. Uh... Your and I also Baba. wanted to add something. I'm not an IT specialist, but in reality, I have the feeling that normally it shouldn't be an IT problem to get this data. Why? Because actually the only thing which we want from the system is something is free kind of data. What is the positive amount declared to the commission, which for sure the system will have? What are corrections for the current years? And what are the corrections for the previous years? Then the sampling population and the net amount can be manually added in Excel, for example. So, uh, or obviously it's better that it is done directly by the IT system, but it means that so that we have correct the data uh, and so that no one needs to do a lot of work with the grouping, we simply need to have free set of data by project partner, positive population, corrections in the current year and correct, corrections in the previous years. And since anyway, for the purpose of the counts, you, uh, the managing authority need to keep this data. I have the feeling that it would be rare that the IT system would not be able to produce it unless, you know, it was not thought about during the design of the system. Thanks, Barbara. Um, Johanna and then Florence, please. There's many, many bright things that are being said. And I think what is most important is what Barbara just said is this. It needs to be clear when we're planning things. We can do a lot. What the table shows does not scare me um, whatsoever. I think the programs can produce that, but it's nothing that we can discover going into the process already. And while I'm partially scared of uh, uh, Ra what Rafael and Salvatore think the programs do already do, and what we do in reality, I do divide corrections up by accounting year. Um, 
but there's a lot of things that are more gray than that where I don't have the overview and specifically when things and I that's what I want to stress we have per accounting year at the moment between 40 and let's say 55,000 individual lines that are reported to us those in, sometimes the project partners even group things together so to get that properly registered and clearly registered by the project partners in the system will be crucial training from our side. And while I don't fear that, um, I think corrections that are done from program side, we are already properly monitoring in the system. I think the, the situation becomes a lot less vague um, when we're talking about our beneficiaries um, because they don't understand, you know, and it's difficult for us to understand the purposes for why we need to have that because they just want to do it either in the simplest way possible for them and mm. um, so that's something that we'll have to to teach them that we'll have to pay uh, attention to and and as, as Barbara said and you know I'm, I'm repeating there a whole lot of things because it's very easy to to pay attention and um, I just would stress about the necessity of having this automatically extracted because we will not be able to do a manual uh, uh, reconciliation on that. It'll absolutely, with 45,000 or 55,000 individual lines that are reported to us, it, and, and 120 or more projects, it's not, and we're not even talking project partners, it needs to be. Um, absolutely crucial for us that we can extract that information. So I do, um, um, while I'm very happy that we are part of the GEMS process, I, I worry for the programs that are either not present here today, that they actually understand the absolute importance of this. Um, because also knowing coming from the audit side, a lot of it when I say, but I need this, I need this, and I need this in the system, it's often, you know, like, oh, do we really need that? So I think it is crucial that we clarify from the beginning that this is really important for everybody to have, and that this is also information that it is that is provided to the MAs that they absolutely know this is crucial to take into consideration. Because I think we we work very well if we just have enough time to develop things properly in the IT system, mm -hmm. and we know from the beginning where it's very difficult for us to adapt once the system is is in place um so that is just you know tell us up front we can do a lot then um but then making changes later on i think will be will be difficult but other than that what katya said in the table doesn't shock me at all yes because for me, the most important thing is not the IT system. In case there is the problem with the design of the IT system, it's very difficult to make up for the problem. The other issues like how the beneficiary declare, uh, it, it can be settled manually somehow. Either we can give instruction to the beneficiaries or if they anyway make mistakes, then the uh, board which gets the uh, declaration from the beneficiary can change it in the system to make sure that not net amount is put, but separately positive amount and corrections for the previous years. So this kind of issue can be easily solved. But the problem with the IT system is if it is wrongly developed, then everyone suffers for many years. Mm. Yes. So no, I think that at least what we can say, the timing of our discussion is good. Just like, okay, but Florence, please. <laughs> yes, hello. Um, I just I agree with many things that Johanna has said that um, I, I think that most of the information is available somewhere already and clear to find. Uh, so in that sense, I'm not shocked neither by the table that has been presented. I think that maybe for some colleagues, the, um, the way we handle this negative amount, because as per guidances, we have different ways of handling them. So I think the vision that Katia has shown is a vision that some of us, like the Greek uh, audit authority put in the chat, they are the vision we see already. So for us, it's quite normal. But I think for some colleagues, they have seen them differently. And in the end, it doesn't change what has been done before, but just that for this, the purpose of this table, we have to show it in a, for some normal ways and for some different way than usually. But like the Greek authority said, we do that in our ACR, we reconcile already. 
and uh, it's just the vision for the purpose of this particular table that for some colleagues might be different. Mm -hmm. But like Johanna said, uh, managing authorities, certifying authorities today, but accounting function tomorrow, they have this information. And uh, like the risk, the main risk I see is what Barbara and Johanna have said, is that, that it's clear from the beginning that the, whatever, wherever it comes from, the beneficiary of the managing authority that those elements are very well spotted, very well isolated. So then the system just lists them and then it's clear for everyone. And I, I, that's the, as such, the process on the table doesn't shock me at all. And I understand uh, because I also already have this kind of very similar vision. Um, but I think like what has been said is that it needs to be really clear in the beginning how to isolate those amounts. Thanks, Florence, and don't worry. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, of course. It's probably, it's important. <laughs> but yeah, what I meant is just, yeah, if, if it's clear for everyone and the system allows it since the beginning, I'm, I'm, I don't see any problem with it. 